Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about the witch's broom, the history of it and what part it plays in modern day witchcraft. So of all the tools that come to mind when you think of witchcraft, there are a few that really stand out. The pointed hat, the cloak, the chalice, the cauldron, the wand, and also the broomstick. Now broomsticks have made their way into history, whether that be from mythology, actual history, TV shows, movies, or most recently in the Harry Potter franchise. Now this question was asked to me by a wonderful subscriber, so I decided that the Halloween season was the perfect time to talk about broomsticks and whether witches actually use them in the modern day. So what actually is a broomstick? Now, I know that there are lots of stories and lots of images online of witches riding a broomstick across the sky, but actually that's not what broomsticks are used for and that's never been what broomsticks are used for. This is actually a giant misunderstanding that I'm gonna go into a little bit more in depth later on in the video. So in modern day practices, a broomstick is actually more commonly referred to as a besom. But what is a broomstick? Well, I have a couple of versions to show you, but this one is much smaller than the one that's behind me, so it's much easier to show you what a besom or broomstick actually is. So a broomstick is actually a really simple concept. It is a bundle of twigs that are bound to a long stave of wood. Now, the type of wood that has been used in broomsticks and besoms really does vary over the centuries. They were originally called broomsticks because the woody fibrous plant that was used for the twigs was actually called broom. And broom is a woody fibrous plant that still grows today and it's no longer frequently used to make besoms, but that's what broomsticks were originally made of. They were a bundle of broom twigs attached to a stick, a broom stick. Kind of nice actually, isn't it? Nowadays, we call them besom. Besoms can actually be found in lots and lots of different types of woods and also lots of different kinds of material. Quite frequently now, you find ash, birch and willow broomsticks or besoms to be really, really popular. But you can also find mini broomsticks and besoms like this that are made of sage. You can also find them made with lavender, with, um, sage bundles, you can also find them in things like corn or grass, depending on where you live. So besoms now are very, very versatile and they can be as plain and boring or as detailed and ornate as you like. This is one of my other besoms. I actually have three. I have the little ones. I also have a very, very intricate and ornate one and I have a very plain one. So this is my most intricate besom. As you can see, it is very beautiful and very detailed. The base is a beautiful rose gold. It has a beautiful charm on the front and it has a twine wood handle going all the way up. Now this is the statement piece that I have in my front room. So in my videos where I'm sitting on the sofa, you can actually see this besom hidden in the background. But as you can see, besoms can really be as plain and as boring or as beautiful or innate as you really like. There is really no restriction on what the look of your besom has to be. So why were broomsticks or besoms considered to be the objects that witches flew across the sky with? Now, this one is a little difficult to answer, and it's because the history of the besom or the broomstick is rooted in a lot of folklore and a lot of mythology. Now, it was common in medieval times for broomsticks to be found in homes, and that's because that's all they had to sweep the floors. It is what they used in their day-to-day -day lives, and they were frequently used solely by women. It is believed that they would see witches flying over hedgerows on broomsticks, and witches themselves actually gave accounts of themselves flying on broomsticks. There are accounts of this countless times through history. So why did people believe that witches flew on broomsticks? Considering that people can't fly on broomsticks, levitation and flight simply isn't possible with or without magic. So why did people believe that you could fly on a simple broomstick? And the answer to this is a lot of psychedelic drugs. 
Now, you may laugh at this, but honestly, this is what the main root of all of these mythologies surrounding the flying of broomsticks actually comes down to. There are items in witchcraft and in many religious ceremonies known as flying ointments. So flying ointments have actually been used for hundreds of years. They contain a concoction of items that can help you with trance work and astral projection. Now that being said, I wouldn't suggest anyone to go out and try flying ointments. They can be very dangerous, even the modern ones can be very difficult to work with. So I wouldn't recommend anyone use them themselves. Instead, try astral projection and trance work the traditional way. But people did, once upon a time, very frequently use flying ointments. Now, flying ointments back in the day contained a lot of very toxic ingredients, including deadly nightshade and other members of these families of plants. And they were used to create a psychedelic trip that would force you into astral projection. Now, it is believed that these flying ointments were actually applied to the body with the besom itself. So that immediately ties the besom into these flying trips and the flying ointments that were traditionally used. Now, alongside this, there are many accounts of both witnesses and practitioners of witchcraft saying that they were flying over hedgerows and flying through the fields on broomsticks. Now, flying isn't exactly what I would call it. I would call it leaping like a crazy person, but people's definition of flying certainly changes over the years. Instead, what would happen is that in order to project or leave the physical body with astral projection, witches using flying ointments would typically jump around with a broomstick to be hedge jumping, physically leaving the floor in an attempt to allow their spiritual being to leave their body. They would also do this in fertility and harvest rituals, almost teaching or training the crops how to grow upwards by showing themselves jumping on bristles high into the air. So there's a lot of different versions of how broomsticks ended up part of this flying mythology, but those are just a few and the few main ones that I wanted to touch on. Now that being said, I'm going to further disclose this, Broomsticks cannot let you fly. I do get a lot of people asking me this, often beginners and very young beginners, wanting to know whether they can actually fly like Harry Potter. Broomsticks are not designed to help you fly. That is not what they are used for. Instead, they have lots of very useful purposes that I'm going to touch on. But broomsticks and their connection to flight and flying witches is mainly through hedge jumping and hedge work, which is astral projection. And that's mainly what they're connected to. It's the flight of the spirit out of the body using the besom or broomstick as a means of giving flight to the physical form through jumping, leaping and other flying ointment additions. So, what are besoms actually used for in the modern age? Now, most people have a vacuum cleaner. We don't need to sweep the floors physically with a broomstick. So, besoms and broomsticks don't have a regular place in our homes. You often don't find a normal person with a broomstick in their house. You mainly only find Wiccans and practitioners of witchcraft with them. So what are they actually used for? So, broomsticks are used for a huge range of different things. Everything from protection, to spirit work, to working with doorways and openings into the spirit worlds, and also for sweeping out negativity. And that is the main use of broomsticks. It is the sweeping of negativity out of the house. So a broomstick is considered to be a physical cleanser. It physically sweeps the energy out of a space where a sage, a smoke cleanser, or incense, or water sprinkled around doesn't physically remove it, it spiritually removes any negativity out of the space. Whereas a besom or broomstick is designed to physically sweep negative energy and excess energy out of a space. Now that being said, a traditional broomstick in the sense of a religious tool is not actually meant to physically sweep across the floor. Instead, you would sweep about an inch or two inches off the surface that you're trying to cleanse or out of the area you're trying to cleanse and you would sweep away that negative energy. 
Now there is a very traditional way of doing this and that is you start top to bottom, back to front and it allows you to sweep that energy through the entire house and out. Generally during festivals and seasons like in bulk the spring clean is often done and traditionally within witchcraft this is the time when you would actually spiritually clean the home with a besom. You would sweep from the back upstairs of a property downstairs and then from the back of the property out towards the front and this is the physical cleansing of the space. Now don't worry if you don't have a humongous besom like I do, you can do this on an altar. If you use a small besom like this you can sweep the negativity off an altar. Now you can do this left to right, I've also seen people do it from the back of the altar to the front of the altar depending on which way round you are doing them. So you're actually sweeping out of the altar, off your sacred space, from the left of your altar to the right of your altar, from back to front. So you actually sweep it all away. And that's a really great way of using besoms. But how often do you cleanse physically? I know many people cleanse with sage or with incense every couple of weeks or even do cleansing floor washes, but not many people physically use a besom. So when else would you use them? Well, typically, in sacred circles, or when you are doing circle casting, you actually sweep the proximity of your circle with the besom before you cast the circle. So you want to remove the negative energy before you put up the spiritual circle, so that your sacred space is pre-cleansed of energy, so there's nothing interfering with your working. So that's another way you can use a besom. Besoms are also items of protection, so rather traditionally, if you place a besom this way up against a door or near a door, they act as protection for the home, stopping negative spirits and entities from passing through, which makes them a wonderful tool to use during Samhain and Beltane, when the veil between our world, the spirit world and the world of the Fae is very, very thin. So they're really great for protection of a home. You can also lay them flat underneath a bed and they act as protection for the sleeper or sleepers within that space. So that's another great use for them. So within Wicca, they have a few more correspondences that can be very interesting. So they are one of the few tools within Wicca and witchcraft that are both masculine and feminine. And that is because of the phallic handle and the broom base. They are both masculine and feminine. They represent the duality of the religion of Wicca in the traditional practice of it. Now I know that more recently there are new versions of Wicca that celebrate masculine or feminine and not necessarily the duality of them, but when I'm referring to Wicca in this way I mean traditional Wicca, traditional British Wicca, which is a dualist religion. So because they represent both masculine and feminine in this combined way, they're often used in celebrations of this union, and that is where hand fastings come in. Now hand fastings are Wiccan and pagan celebrations, primarily Wiccan. They are the binding of two individuals together in harmony and in a marriage. Now I know that now in England anyway, um, Wiccan hand fastings are actually a legal form of marriage, but I know that in other countries they aren't yet, so that's why I use the quotation marks. So they're actually used during hand fasting ceremonies, traditionally at the end of the ceremony, where the couple actually jump the broom. And it is the jumping of the broom that represents the passage from single life into married life. And it's also a celebration of fertility, and it's often a fertility ritual to jump over the broom because it represents the union of both male and female. So that's how they're used traditionally in Wicca. Alongside all of this is their association with doorways. Now they are very connected with fey and woodland fey energy because of the use of the wood in their making. But they are also representations of doorways. So in Wicca, that jumping the broom during a hand fasting or marriage ceremony is jumping over that pathway to jumping the door from single life into married couple life. They are also used in circles as actual doorways in the circle that you can pass through without breaking the circle. They can also be used to house spirits temporarily to be moved on into the other plane, and they can be used to assist spirits in travelling from this plane to the next. 
Now all of these connections to doorways are really important because they are often hung over doorways as protection or placed upside down by doorways to act as additional protection. If you don't have space for a big broomstick or besom and you don't necessarily want to have a giant broomstick by your front door, if you have an altar space like I have back here that you want to offer it a little bit of protection, if you place a besom or broomstick, it can even be something this size or smaller, upside down in one corner, whichever corner you like of an altar, you can act to protect that sacred space. So that's a really good way of using them as well. So this Halloween, when you see loads of people walking around the streets with broomsticks pretending they can fly, think back to the use of broomsticks originally. Why people thought that you could fly with a broomstick and all of the magical uses you can find for them. And I'm sure that even the really cheap broomsticks you can find in Home Bargains or the 99p store can actually come in really useful for your magical practice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you found it informative. If you have any videos you would like to see me make or any questions you want to ask me, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. I will add more information about broomsticks and besoms down in the description box below so you guys can find out more. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more magical content and I'll see you guys next Saturday at 6 o'clock. Bye!